Hey, what's going on Juan here? In today's video, we'll go over how to integrate Ubiquiti's Unified Protect with Home Assistant so you can easily control different settings in your security cameras directly from Home Assistant. On top of that, we also go over a few useful automations that you can set up with this integration. All right, let's get started. To manage the Unify Protect cameras with Home Assistant, there is a custom integration available in Hacks that you will need to install. If you haven't installed Hacks yet, I have a video tutorial that shows you how to set it up. You can find a link in the description below. Alright, before installing the integration, you need to set up a local account via the Unify web interface. The local account would allow the custom integration to access and manage the settings for your Unify security cameras. So open the Unify web interface and go to Manage Users. And on the top right corner, click on Add User. On the pop-up that comes up, set the role to Limited Admin and change the account type to Local User Only. You can set the name for this local account to Home Assistant and also add the Home Assistant logo as the profile image. Then set up a username and a password. Under Application Permissions, set the Unify Protect option to Administrator. For all other options, you can change it from View Only to None. After that, click on Save to create the new local account. Next, you need to enable RTSP on the cameras you would like to access via Home Assistant. So on the top right corner, click on the menu icon and click on Protect. In the Unify Protect web interface, go to Unify Devices. Click the cameras that you would like to access via Home Assistant and then click on Settings. On the Real-Time Streaming Protocol, enable the Streaming Quality option that you would like to use. Alright, so you created the local account in Unify Protect and enable RTSP on the security cameras. You can now go ahead and set up the Unify Protect custom integration. So in your Home Assistant instance, open Hacks, go to Integrations and click on Explore and Add Repositories. Search for Unify Protect, open it and then click on install this repository in Hacks. A pop-up comes out where you can choose the version that you would like to install. Leave it set to the latest and then click on install. After installing, you need to restart Home Assistant. But first, you need to check that the stream option in Home Assistant is enabled. So using the VS Code add-on, open the configuration that YAML file and check that the stream option is there. If not, just add it and restart Home Assistant. After Home Assistant is back online, return to the configuration page and click on Integrations. Click on Add Integration, search for Unify Protect and click on it. A new pop-up comes out where you need to enter the Unify Protect IP address and the username and password for the local account you created. Leave the other option set to default and then click on Submit. If the connection is successful, another pop-up comes out where you can assign your security cameras to specific areas. Click on Finish and then the configuration is completed. If you click on Devices under the Unify Protect integration, you can view the entities that you can manage from Home Assistant. Then you can add the camera stream to the dashboard using the Picture Entity card. Now that the Unify Protect integration is all set, let's set up some automations. There are a few useful automations that I want to share with you today. The first one is for the Unify doorbell. When using the Unify Protect app, when someone rings the doorbell or motion is detected, you get a notification letting you know of the event. However, the notification doesn't include an image of who is at the door. You have to actually click on the notification to open the app and then see the camera feed. Now, with Home Assistant, we can create an automation that will send us a notification with the alert and also include a snapshot of the camera feed. Let me show you how to set it up. In Home Assistant, go to Configurations, Automations, and then click on Add Automation. On the pop-up that comes out, click on Start with an Empty Automation. Set the name for the automation as Notify when doorbell is pressed. Then on the Triggers, set the Trigger Type to Event, and the Event Type to Unify Protect underscore Doorbell. Scroll down to Actions and set the Action Type to Call Service. The Service to Camera that Snapshot. Under Targets, click on Pick Entity and select the Doorbell Entity. Next, you need to set up a location where you want to save the image. If you open your Home Assistant config folder, you should have a folder named www. That will be the folder where you want to save the image. So if you don't have that folder available, go ahead and create it. In the automation, enter under file name the path to the folder which will be forward slash config forward slash www. 
Then you need to enter the name for the image you want to save. So type at the end forward slash doorbell underscore image dot JPG. Make sure that you type JPG at the end for the image format. Now, anytime the automation is triggered, it will save a snapshot from the doorbell camera and it will override any existing images with the same name. Next, add another action to send a notification with the alert and the doorbell snapshot. So click on add action, set the action type to call service. On the service, search for notify.movo underscore app and select the device to send the notification. On the message, type there is someone at the door and for the title, enter doorbell press. To send the image along with the notification, enter the following under data. Another useful thing to add is to open the Unify Protect app when you click on the notification. So you can view the doorbell camera and use features like two-way audio. To add this, add the following under data as well. This method of opening the Unify Protect app only works on Android. If you're on iOS, you need to use the iOS Shortcuts app and create a shortcut to open the Unify Protect app. Then you would add the following instead. If you want to open a specific page in Home Assistant, you would enter URL colon forward slash lovelace forward slash and then the name for the Home Assistant page. On Android devices, sometimes when the screen has been turned off for a long period of time, the Home Assistant notification won't come up until you turn on the screen and unlock the device. To override that, you need to add the following. You also want to add the group option below and name it Doorbell Pressed. So all notifications from this automation shows together on your device instead of several separate notifications. Lastly, save the automation and when you test it, you should get a notification from Home Assistant letting you know that someone is at the door and it would also include an image from the doorbell. Next, let's set up another automation for when motion is detected. For this example, I'm going to do it for the doorbell. However, you can set up the same automation for any other unified camera around your home. Add a new automation, give it a name, and then under triggers, set the trigger type to state. Under Entity, select the Camera Entity, the state set it from Off to On. Scroll down to Actions and set up an action to get a snapshot from the camera. So set the action type to Call Service, the service set it to Camera that Snapshot. On the Target, select Pick an Entity and select the Camera Entity. Lastly, set the file name to forward slash config forward slash www forward slash doorbell underscore motion underscore image that JPG. After that, add another action to send a notification with the image. So set the action type to call service. On the service, search for notify that mobile underscore app and select the device to send the notification. Then enter a message and a title to show on the notification. Then in data, enter the following to send the camera snapshot with the notification. If you want to make the notification open the Unify Protect app, enter the following. If you are on iOS, use the Shortcuts app to create a shortcut to open the app. And then instead of using the variable click action, use URL with the following. Then at the end, add the name for the shortcut that you created. Now to get the notification right away on Android, enter the following. Lastly, to group the notifications, enter the following. Save the automation, and when there is motion detected on the camera, you will receive a Home Assistant notification with the camera image. The next automation that I want to show you is useful when you have cameras inside your home. If you want to have some privacy when you are at home at any time, you can have a toggle to enable and disable the camera easily. The automation will set up a privacy zone, blacking out the whole camera view, and it stop recording as well. Let me show you how to set it up. The first thing that you want to do is create a toggle that will trigger the automation. So in Home Assistant, go to Configuration, Helpers, click on Add Helper, and select the toggle option to create an input boolean. Set up a name and an icon for this toggle, and then click on Create. After that, go back to Configuration, Automations, and click on Add Automation. Set up a name for it, then on the triggers, set the trigger type to State. For Entity, select the input boolean you just created and set the two state to on. Duplicate this trigger and change the two state to off. Scroll down to Actions and set the action type to choose. For option one, set the condition type to state. 
select the input boolean on their entity and set the state to on. Then set up an action for this condition, so click on add action. Set the action type to call service. For service search for unify protect that set privacy mode. Select it and under entity ID, select the camera entity. After that, select privacy mode and switch the toggle on. If the camera is always recording, you can then select recording mode and set it to never. To explain this a little bit, when the toggle we created via the helper page is switched on, it will trigger this action which will activate privacy mode to black out the whole camera view. And it will also set the recording to never. Now we need to set another option to do the opposite when the toggle is switched off. Click on add option and then click on add condition. Set the condition type to state. Select the input boolean on their entity and set the state to off. Scroll down and click on Add Action. Set the action type to Call Service and under Entity select Unify Protect Set Privacy Mode. Select the camera under Entity ID. Select Privacy Mode and leave the toggle off. On the Recording Mode, you can set it to Always or to Motion and lastly save the automation. If you test the automation, you can see that switching the toggle on sets the privacy zone to black out the whole camera view and turns off the recording as well. Then when switching it off, it disables the privacy zone and the camera starts recording again. Alright, the last thing that I want to show you is to set up a switch to disable the doorbell chime at any time. This switch is super useful when you don't want to be disturbed by someone ringing the doorbell and it is definitely a must have if you have a newborn. First of all, go to Developer Tools, States, and search for the doorbell entity. In the Attribute section, there are two options, Chime Enable and Chime Duration. By default, the Chime Duration is set to 300 when the Chime is enabled on the doorbell. Remember the number because when you set up the switch, the option to turn on the Chime, you will need to set it to that specific number. Next, to create a custom switch, access the Home Assistant config folder using the VS Code add-on. By default, you should have a file named switch.yaml. Then inside the configuration file, you will have the option switch colon include switch.yaml, linking the switch.yaml file to the configuration file. I personally don't like to have all my switches in one file. I'd rather have each switch in its own file to make things a little more organized. If you would like to do it this way, replace switch include switch.yaml with this. Then create a new folder named switches and inside that folder create a file named doorbell underscore chime.yaml. Inside that file, enter the following template. To explain this template a little bit, the custom switch is set up with the name doorbell chime. It's going to update the status of the chime by checking on the chime enable attribute on the doorbell entity. Then when the switch is turned on, it will run the service Unify Protect that set doorbell chime duration and set it to 300. Then when the switch is turned off, it will run the same service and it will set the chime duration to zero. Save the new switch and then restart Home Assistant to apply the changes. When you test the new switch and turn it off, you will notice that the chime enable attribute changes to false and the chime duration to zero. Then when you turn it back on, it will change the chime enable attribute to true and the chime duration to 300. Alright, so we integrated Unify Protect with Home Assistant and we went over a few useful automations. This integration definitely makes the experience with the Unify Protect cameras a lot better than just using the Unify Protect app. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I will see you in the next video.